You've probably heard of the Raspberry Pi, the tiny computer that's been making big waves in the tech world, but do you know when this miniature marvel reached its peak popularity, or how many generations of Raspberry Pi have been released since its debut? From its humble beginnings to its current status as a maker's best friend, the Raspberry Pi has come a long way. In this video, we'll take a journey through the history of the Raspberry Pi, exploring its evolution, impact, and what makes it so beloved by hobbyists and pros alike. So, let's dive in and find out more about this incredible little computer that's been changing the game. Let's start with a brief history. In 2006, Eben Upton, a British computer scientist and engineer, conceived the idea of creating a low-cost, credit card-sized computer. At the time, Upton was a lecturer at the University of Cambridge, where he was concerned about the decline of computer science education in the UK. His goal was to create a device that would make programming and computer science accessible and affordable for students. In 2009, Upton co-founded the Raspberry Pi Foundation, a UK-based charity organization with several other individuals. The foundation's mission was to develop a low-cost computer that would be accessible to people worldwide. The first Raspberry Pi model, the Model B, was released in February 2012. The Model B was a surprise hit, selling over 100,000 units in its first year. The following year, the Model A, a stripped-down version of the Model B, was released. The original Raspberry Pi models were powered by a Broadcom BCM 2835 system on chip, featuring a 700 MHz ARM 11 processor and 256 MB of RAM. The Model A was priced at around $25, while the Model B was priced at $35. In 2014, the Raspberry Pi Foundation released the Model A Plus and Model B Plus, which brought improved performance and new features to the table. The Model B Plus boasted 512 megabytes of RAM, four USB ports, and a 40-pin GPO header. February 2015 saw the release of the Raspberry Pi 2. The Pi 2 was powered by a more powerful quad-core ARM Cortex-A7 processor and one gigabyte of RAM, all while maintaining the same $35 price point. The Raspberry Pi 2 opened up new possibilities for more demanding projects and introduced support for Windows 10. The Pi 2 did not have a corresponding A model as the next generation was already in development. A year later, the Raspberry Pi 3 was released, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of the Raspberry Pi platform. The Pi 3 retained the same $35 price point while introducing a major update and more powerful hardware. We'll be taking a closer look at the Raspberry Pi 3 in the next few minutes. Stay with me as we revisit the Pi 3, a significant milestone in the evolution of the Raspberry Pi platform. In my opinion, the most successful model to date. So, the Raspberry Pi 3, a fantastic single board computer and a highly impactful model in the Raspberry Pi series. It was a significant upgrade to the previous Pi 2 Model B, bringing several important features to the table. This was the first Raspberry Pi to include built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, making it much easier to connect to the internet and other devices without the need for cables. A feature that people had been asking for a long time and a missing element of the platform. In an interview, founder Eben Upton explained that wireless and Bluetooth weren't on the original device because it was a million miles beyond us at the kind of scale we were at back then. We sold 800,000 Raspberry Pis before we hired our first employee. There's no way you could do this sort of stuff with no employees. It's eaten a couple of man years probably, getting radio onto the device. The inclusion of built-in Wi-Fi in the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B significantly enhanced its appeal to the mass market, making it more user-friendly, cost-effective, portable, and versatile. This feature helped broaden the user base and expand the range of applications for the Raspberry Pi, further solidifying its position as a go-to platform for DIY projects, education, and innovation. This is the moment when I first heard of Raspberry Pi, and there was a lot of hype around the new Pi, and for good reason. I did some research on what this Pi thing was all about, and I bought one. Interestingly, I originally thought of using it as a multimedia hub for my non-smart TV, for streaming YouTube and other media. But then I bought a dozen accessories and sensors, and started getting acquainted with Linux. I didn't do any soldering, but I was blown away by what you get for the cheap price of the Pi 3. The radio chip wasn't the only new feature in the Pi 3, of course. The new BCM2837 system on chip, developed specifically for the project by Broadcom, featured a 1.2 GHz 64-bit quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 CPU paired with 1 GB RAM. 
The GPU was a Broadcom Video Core 4 with a clock speed of 400 MHz, a low-power GPU used in several smartphones, including some Samsung and BlackBerry models. Overall, the Pi 3 received a substantial performance uplift thanks to its more powerful and efficient processor and higher clock speed, leading to faster boot times, application performance, better multitasking, and enhanced multimedia performance. It has a micro SD card slot for running software and data storage, supporting various Linux distributions, with Raspberry Pi OS, formerly called Raspbian, being the official operating system. This allows for easy swapping of cards if you have multiple projects on different cards. Let's say a few words about the Raspberry Pi OS. In addition to good hardware, you also need the right software. The Pi OS provides a user-friendly desktop environment, making it accessible to users of all skill levels, including beginners who might be intimidated by a command line interface. It comes pre-installed with a wide range of software, including programming tools like Python and Scratch, educational applications, and productivity software. Raspberry Pi OS is designed with education in mind, featuring tools and resources that support learning and teaching in computer science and other STEM subjects. This alignment with the Raspberry Pi Foundation's educational mission has helped attract schools, educators, and students. The widespread adoption of Raspberry Pi OS has led to a large and active community of users who contribute tutorials, projects, and support. This community support has made it easier for new users to find help and resources, fostering a vibrant ecosystem around the Raspberry Pi. Thanks to many guides on various blogs and YouTube videos, I've experimented with several projects over the years. I've been using the Raspberry Pi for about four years now, just for one purpose, tracking planes. With an automatic dependent surveillance broadcast, USB receiver, and antenna, the Pi captures flight data from passing aircraft and shares it with the popular flight tracking service, Flight Radar 24. This configuration works independently and doesn't require my attention, which is why the Pi looks a bit neglected. To be honest, this setup is overpowered for this purpose. I also have a first gen Pi Zero wireless and a second gen Pi Zero, which are more compact, less powerful and cheaper alternatives. They're currently unused, but I'm too lazy to change the setup. Maybe I'll get motivated to upgrade if this video does well on YouTube. One of the main features of the Raspberry Pi is the general purpose input-output pins, or GPIO. These have been a standard feature on Raspberry Pi boards since the very first model. The Pi 3 continues to use the 40-pin GPIO header, offering the same GPIO capabilities. They enable users to connect and control a wide range of external devices, sensors and actuators. For example, they can detect when a physical button is pressed, control the speed and direction of a motor, or read sensor data like temperature, humidity, and motion. Overall, the Raspberry Pi is a popular choice for DIY projects, robotics, home automation, and educational purposes. Initially, I was more enthusiastic and experimented with various sensors and configurations. However, now I'm more laid back and prefer to avoid trial and error experiments. I'd probably rather pay more money for fully assembled hats or kits. As of now, my interests in the Pi 3 are more from a mini PC perspective, specifically building some kind of a server. There are many variants and guides available on the web. You can set up a web server to host a website, a retro gaming server to play classic games or host a Minecraft world, a VPN server to secure your internet connection and access your home network remotely, a DNS server with Pi Hole to improve privacy and security, a home assistant to control smart devices, or a Jenkins server for development usage. You can even use it as a media server to stream your media collection. The possibilities are endless. Of course, while the Raspberry Pi 3 is capable of running many types of servers, it may not be suitable for high traffic or resource intensive applications. For more demanding tasks, using a more powerful device or a cloud-based solution would be a better option. Additionally, micro SD cards are not reliable for non-stop operations. However, the Pi 3 can still be used for experiments, learning and gaining experience as long as you have the desire and time to spare. Two years later, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced an incremental upgrade to the Model B, named the Model B Plus. It retained the same quad-core ARM Cortex-A53 processor, but with a higher clock speed of 1.4 GHz. Additionally, it featured improved wireless connectivity with dual-band Wi-Fi 5 and Bluetooth 4.2. The Model B Plus also introduced a new Power Over Ethernet header, which allows for power to be delivered over the Ethernet cable, eliminating the need for a separate power supply. Furthermore, the thermal management was enhanced. 
Overall, it was a good incremental upgrade considering the two-year span since the introduction of the first Pi 3. The next significant update was in 2019 with the Pi 4, which brought substantially more powerful hardware, offering up to two, three times the CPU performance. Initially, it was released with a base MSRP price of $35 for the 1GB model, which was the same as the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. However, many users felt that the 1GB model was insufficient for the increased performance and capabilities of the Raspberry Pi 4. The 2GB and 4GB RAM models were priced at $45 and $55, respectively, which was significantly higher than the base price of the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Some users argued that the higher price of the Raspberry Pi 4, especially for the models with more RAM, did not offer the same value proposition as the Raspberry Pi 3. They felt that the price increase was not justified given the performance improvements. The higher price of the Raspberry Pi 4 was a welcome opportunity for the competition, which had gradually become more appealing. Other single board computers offered similar or better specifications at a lower price, making the Pi 4 seem less competitive. When the Raspberry Pi 4 was first released, significant shortages and supply issues occurred. The high demand for the new model, combined with limited production capacity, led to long wait times and difficulty in obtaining the device. This scarcity frustrated many users who were eager to upgrade to the Raspberry Pi 4, but were unable to purchase one due to the limited availability. The global semiconductor shortage, which began in late 2020 and continued into 2021 and beyond, exacerbated the availability issues for the Raspberry Pi 4. The shortage of key components, such as memory and processors, affected the production and supply of Raspberry Pi devices. This shortage led to further delays and increased prices for the Raspberry Pi 4, making it even more challenging for users to obtain the device. Scalping became a significant issue, with platforms like eBay, Amazon, and other online marketplaces providing a convenient venue for scalpers to sell Raspberry Pi 4 units at marked up prices. Buyers desperate to get their hands on the Pi 4 were willing to pay these higher prices. In response to the global component shortages and increased production costs, the Raspberry Pi Foundation announced price increases for the Raspberry Pi 4 in late 2021. The price of the 2GB model was increased from $45 to $55 and the 4GB model was increased from $55 to $75. The combination of higher prices and limited availability led to frustration among users who had come to expect the Raspberry Pi to be an affordable and readily available device. Despite the controversies, the Raspberry Pi community remained strong and many users continued to support and advocate for the platform. Overall, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B is widely considered the most popular Raspberry Pi model, with a large and dedicated community, extensive media coverage and impressive sales figures. It was widely adopted by hobbyists, educators and professionals, and it played a significant role in popularizing the use of single board computers in various fields, including robotics, home automation and IoT development. With its appearance, many people heard about Pi for the first time. And the name Raspberry Pi has become a byword for this type of computers. Something like Xerox is often used as a byword or generic term for photocopying, regardless of the brand of the copier or Google, of course, frequently used as a verb meaning to search for information online, regardless of the search engine used. Tom's Hardware asked Eben Upton for the all-time total sales data, and Upton confirmed that there have been 57 million Raspberry Pis sold since February 2012. According to Upton, the biggest selling models were the Raspberry Pi 3 range of boards. The Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, Model A+, and Model B+, Plus, released between 2016 and 2018, sold 23 million units, approximately 37.7% of total sales. A big success, not surprisingly. But what is the current situation? The current generation of the Raspberry Pi is the Pi 5. It was announced and released in late 2023, offering more powerful and efficient processor, multiple RAM configurations, Wi-Fi 6, better graphics, and so on. The next Pi 6 is not likely to appear anytime soon. Meanwhile, Raspberry Pi is now a public company. What kind of future this will lead to remains to be seen. What are your impressions of Raspberry Pi's products over the years? Have you used any of the Raspberry Pi models? Do you currently use one? Or are you planning to in the future? What do you think about the direction the company is heading? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, take care, stay curious and keep exploring. See you in the next video.